Hi, it's Travis White with the Persuasive Communication Tip of the Week. Trust is the basis of persuasion, and when you give a presentation, your audience will decide whether they trust you or not. That's especially true of the question and answer session. So I'd like to do two videos, at least, on question and answer sessions. Today I'd like to talk about the basic etiquette of question and answer sessions. In a future video, I'll talk about how to handle hostile questions in a negative environment. Your objective in a question and answer session is simply to answer all questions asked of you, answer them openly and honestly, while remaining comfortable and confident. Now, comfortable and confident is an important concept here because you can answer questions honestly, but if you appear to be defensive or angry or petulant or evasive, you can still lose the trust of the audience. General etiquette, I'd encourage you to put question and answer sessions at the end of a presentation rather than interspersing them if that's possible. At the beginning of the presentation, you say, I'd be happy to take 10 minutes of questions at the end of the presentation. So it's clear you set your expectations. When you get to the question and answer session, there are some basic rules of etiquette of how you interact with people. So for instance, people don't like to be pointed at. I don't like to be pointed at. You don't like to be pointed at. Use an open hand. Indicate with an open hand who the next questioner is. If you know the names of some people but not all people, don't use names. If you say, John, what's your question? Mary, what's your question? Yes, sir, what's your question? It's clear you don't know the name of that third person. John and Mary are insiders. That third person is an outsider. How much trust have you built with that third person? Not much. You've made him feel like an outsider. Similarly, sometimes people will ramble when they ask a question. If you appear petulant or angry because they're rambling, well, again, you're not going to build trust. It's also a good time to repeat the question. A rambling question, it's sometimes hard to know exactly what the question is. Repeat the question, ask back to the uh, questioner, what is the nature of your question, and clarify it before you start to answer. That also helps the rest of the audience understand the question. Don't say, that's a great question. What does that mean about all the other questions? You've said you've had five questions and all of a sudden you get a sixth question, you say that's a great question. What you're implying is the others are not great questions. Also, when a person asks you a question that you clearly answered in your presentation, again, don't be petulant, don't be sarcastic, it's not part of the Lawson way. Don't say, well, as I said on slide number 12, that simply puts the person in a defensive position. It's insulting. You don't build trust. Simply answer the question as you would answering any other question. The other members of the audience will know that you did a favor for that person. They'll respect you for that. And again, you don't put anybody in a negative light. At the end of the question and answer session, say I have time for one or two more questions. Again, set your expectations clearly. And at the end of the session, say if you have additional questions, I'd be happy to talk to you either today or via phone or via email. Make sure they know how to follow up with you for additional questions. All right, that's the basic etiquette. Again, in a future video, we'll talk about how to handle hostile questions in a negative environment. So that's the Persuasive Communication Tip of the Week. See you again next week.